Tape is like a rocket which is uh, about to launch, right? So whenever you are launching a rocket, you need enormous amount of fuel and thrust to uh, make it reach uh, to the set destination or even an orbit, right? So uh, choose your own pay is one of those uh, components of the fuel which will uh, boost Frappe. The overall aim is to uh, think big, how our work is uh, creating value. Uh, that part uh, is more highlighted now. So we are looking at bigger pictures now. Every single piece of information that say a CXO has, even a new person who has recently joined has. So they're supposed to use it. Nobody else can basically tell what your work is worth or what you are worth. So people get to decide. The first idea of pick your own pick came when I listened to the lecture by Ricardo Sambler. At Semco, he implemented this. And I think the, what he said is, you know, if you hire people, you should trust them. And, uh, and you know, selecting pay is one of the most important tools you have as a company in, in deciding what direction you want or what kind of qualities you want to promote. In terms of the values and in terms of where we want to go with this, uh, you know, I'm very clear that this is the direction we want to go. And obviously between a less radical and more radical choice, you know, I personally always picked up the more radical choice. Uh, I think the main motive behind uh, choosing, uh, opting for this uh, process is, is to help individuals recognize their um, responsibilities, their goals and ambitions. And also within Frappe, right, it opens a new dimension. Everyone knows what our culture is about, at least in the company. So we talk about democracy, freedom, transparency. So I think this appraisal definitely suits our culture and at least it reflects that we just don't speak, we do also according to our culture. In this period I have been through four appraisal cycles. So uh, it took, it was a journey for us to reach to this choose your own pay. So in the very first year when we had our appraisals right, uh, it was quite different from the conventional appraisal cycles. Uh, we all decided to make our salaries public. Uh, that was the very first appraisal. In the second one, basically your appraisal was decided by the company collectively based on a rating that they all agreed upon. And last year, we started with the pick your own pay model. So uh, we uh, the difference between this and last year was uh, we decided to do the moderation at the end of the appraisals. But this year we decided to take it up a notch and didn't do any moderation. At the end of every year, we have SOPs, that is a statement of purpose, which includes your achievements, your failures, your goals for the next year, and you know what your compensation should be accordingly. And we decided that, you know, give time to the people and let them moderate their own hikes, uh, just in case if they've asked too much. We want people to be accountable and justify their pay. We have a goal setting system, which we have set up. So what you do is you set up the goals, get it reviewed and approved by your mentors and there would be periodic reviews for the same. And if anybody has put any ambitious number, they'll also have to set up goals accordingly. And if the moderation or you say the reviews are going to be strict, then there is no escape. Uh, yeah, it is different. Yeah, I did. No. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Yes. I think a lot of people like, you know, were very uncomfortable with this whole process and uh, so and are still very uncomfortable even after picking their payer now, you know, there was like at least a, one third of the people said they are very, now they are worried that they have to live up to expectations. So that itself is a good sign I would feel that, you know, people are already feeling accountability themselves and uh, I think this kind of thing will force them to think out of out of the box. I really like this kind of uh, disruptive energy that is created by Picture of the I love drama. Right? That is why uh, I try to not take any leaves in the pre-April phase. I try to be present all the time because there is so much drama. And usually my idea is you know just, just go and watch like Jack Ryan on Prime or something like that. But you know I don't have to because you know this is happening in Prabhu. I've never really uh, self-assessed my work in this intricate detail. Otherwise, usually, you know, it's just a normal checkbox with objectives that you have to just check. 
but over here we had to actually articulate all of our shortcomings all of our successes so for us as an organization i think that builds crazy amount of accountability and trust and that sense of um, ownership and your self worth i think that's something that we really need to talk about because more often than not you are paid peanuts and you are working so hard so your self worth is like you know automatically um sink to what you get in return so the the fact that we are getting what we ask for in return is i think that's a great you know boost uh, emotionally also i think you have the choice then to go all in into your work or whether you want to be a little bit more reserved in your efforts so that i think is really nice so my only area of concern here is like as you said as a part of the human resource team i wouldn't want people to burn out because when people have put ambitious numbers they are going to work for it right or work towards achieving their goals and their goals are higher their targets are higher in the traditional organizations when you get a number from the top down that is a kind of feedback only that validation is one of the important factors so i think a moderation at the end wouldn't have hurt anyone so what i thought was is uh, first we need to prove the revenue and then probably give out the money and so first giving out the money and then proving the revenue the other way where you need to pay cash right and if you don't have cash then you're still paying the cash then probably you're like really burning a lot probably some safer bet would have worked better uh no trust issues very chaotic so much confusion exhausting uh very intense but then i think that's a given because this is the first time we are trying to implement such a bold move so uh, again you have two sets of people um one is where people there is no difference right because they feel that whatever they have asked for um defines whatever work they have done in the past or whatever work they're going to pick up so th- it makes no difference to them the pay factor the other set of people because they've asked for a particular pay they are working towards it uh pay does not motivate me so that's why i'm saying that uh, it does not affect me directly so uh looking at other people's uh, uh work that will eventually motivate me but since they are uh, affected by this uh, pay thing uh, they are working more and uh, they are motivated indirectly motivates me so yes and no so yes because yes it does the same pressure on me saying whatever we did last year which was for 4.5x growth we have to achieve in a way the same way if we don't then your salary is in a way not justified but that is just some say 10% of the motivation the 90% comes from the fact that see we have a real chance with the product that i'm running and i either have to find out whether this product could be a huge success or it can't possibly be so based on how much growth we had in the current project in the past by the way and how much we are projecting the project would do next year and how much we i mean i personally have contributed to that growth and by talking to all my mentors and the number that came out was too large and then i decided just like every time i'm going to take a small chunk of it in cash the rest in equity so the company doesn't have like large cash flow burden but we also pay out compensation based on you know, how much value i created i wasn't like you know i want to buy a ferrari in like 3 years or whatever and then put on my pay <laughs> it's not super like i i thought about it later on like i could justify it but first the pay came then like the justification came i wanted to take it easy this year so i didn't want a hike uh, because i want to step back and uh, maybe uh, give give others a chance so my big compensation happens because uh, of the equity i own in the company a lot of people have opted for stock options this year more than ever so i think this also shows that people two things that you know people believe in the organization and people also have long term uh i uh, you know i have a interest to participate in a long term recreations so one thing i seen is there was a bit of nervousness because whatever people picked now that's going to be as it is so now there can be repercussions also for the same so that is one downside of this completely crazy appraisal uh there were few people who actually didn't ask for much uh they hardly hardly added 10 to 5% 
of their uh, existing salary and then proposed a new one in that case they wanted to be more comfortable they wanted to do whatever they are currently doing in the next year as well and then grow gradually so yeah that was a surprising moment for me yes uh, no no yes mm, no yeah yes maybe <laughs> yes yes at first when i saw the pay proposals i mean i obviously looked at the outliers and you know i was quite <laughs> uh, i think i reacted strong, strongly when i saw some of the outliers first uh, most of the people i interact with are again freshers like me and no one knows what number to put so before this entire appraisal process started there were three four models that were put forth by the team during the offsite the people i talked to they tried to use these same three four models which are obviously faulty and hence they came up with really huge numbers than they should have and that kind of created a little negative emotion in the team that you know why are people asking for so much number but the reason is they don't know better there is a general wage inflation that is going on in the market and i think that played into a lot of lot of people's mind and i think people also balanced it with you know with the company growing 100% Uh, in terms of collections last year and uh, you know i think both these factors played a role in uh, external factors that played a role in people picking their pay people are not totally unreasonable uh, sometimes people do ask for pays which you may think or few people people outside may think is unreasonable but from their perspective uh, is reasonable for some people it work out for some people it might not overall I don't know. It depends on whether we run out of money or not. I don't think you're going to run out of money, right? I hope. So. I hope so. Uh, it kind of worked last year, so I am assuming it will work for uh, us in this year too. I can see the energy levels are completely different now, and uh, yeah, I think it's already working. If you ask me, a lot of companies wouldn't dare to do something like that because one is they're scared of what people may ask. They may ask exorbitant numbers, or you know. they have a very strong hierarchy in place and they think that wouldn't work i think it's worth a try we did it last year we didn't fail so that's why we're doing it this year as well and i think you're making people accountable you're making you're, you know you're connecting people more like they they're more involved in the process and as any human resource personnel you'd want your people to be connected in anything you do